Hello everyone, welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3, 5th edition edition. Last time we had an interesting, shall we say, self-care session with a man that, in the end of it all, instilled Lovatar's love to us, which means we have a when we have 30% hit points or fewer, we gain a plus two to our attack rolls and wisdom saving throws, which is very interesting. Interested to see how long that remains on us for. And we picked up a little new gear, but right now we are in this great big chamber and we have a prison break to do. So before that, I would like to take our conjured imp friend, make them invisible, and just go for a little scouty scout since they can fly and since they're invisible, why not go around and just peek our noses in and see what's going on? So we've got two here, a Butcher, level 3, 27 hit points, and a Beastmaster, level 3. Down here, there are two Wargs. We've got Fur and Tail. They're currently locked in, although this gate only has 12 hit points. And there's a switch there. Down here, we've got a fire wine barrel and a couple of wooden hinges on these big wooden, uh, big wood burning torch chandeliers. A shrine with nothing interesting happening on it. And then three brawler, burka, and one with much lower HP totals. Nothing up top. A ornate door that we cannot open as an imp. And that seems to be the total of our foes here. This alcohol is already a flammable surface. And as we are, we're not going to be able to get in here. But they do have a lever here. Now, unfortunately, the imp cannot pull the lever, which is a shame. But if we can pull that lever and release the bear, we should have a much easier fight. So here's my next question. I know that we have, somewhere between us, the Mage Hand cantrip. Can our Mage Hand... Unfortunately, it's not a rogue's mage hand, so it's not invisible. It doesn't look like the mage hand can pull the lever. No, our mage hand can't pull the lever, which seems like something that mage hand should be able to do, certainly. We can shove, hide, throw, and unarmed strike for one bludgeoning damage. Oh, this is the stupidest solution to a puzzle I've ever seen. This mage hand is only going to be around for a minute. So it's going to take us like at least four mage hands, I think, to get through this gate. But no one else seems to care or notice us. Please, no, what are you doing? What did you just do? path lies before me. Why are you stood there of all the places? Alright. Will stand there. This is so dumb. <laughs> How did you get there? Oh, man. Okay. Grace. These things have stayed interesting. I need you to be back on the other side of this fence post. We can't walk through here. We have to jump through. I suppose these guys don't actually see us as a threat yet. That's the bit I'm forgetting. We're not intruders in this space per se. Okay, right. That was awkward, but... 
We didn't start an unwanted fight. Played at the ready. Where is that mage hand gone? Not as bad as it could have. Am I going mad? Where is Mage Hand? Oh, it's right there. Alright. Thanks for really startling me, game. I appreciate that. Back to trying to break down this door. One HP at a time. The imps might have an easier time of doing this, but I think they're more likely to instigate a fight with the randoms behind us. So I'm just going to do this. Yeah, last session was a weird one, wasn't it? Getting beaten up until we receive God's blessings. But that is certainly something that I feel is like very homebrew D&D style. Like I've done not something quite as dramatic as that, but... I've definitely had players pray at altars to various gods in various ways for things like we were at a coastal town and the players needed to go down into a shipwreck but none of them had water breathing so they had to please a god of the oceans to receive a blessing of water breathing for several hours. So it's those kind of little boons that make you go, yeah, I could do this. This is good. Right, so 10 more hit points on this gate. Then I'm hoping that the bear is just going to start laying waste to everyone around us. And if they're having a rough time of it, we will certainly get involved. Four, three, two, one. Okay, that's initiative up there. Let's get ourselves involved. Alright, we are also in the initiative now. Let's get the invisible imp doing something. Sure, come attack this guy. Why not? For a crit, no less. And the mage hand's still in the fight, amazingly. Well, we might as well... Can we? No, even though we're a spectral hand, we can't get this high up. There's nothing for us to throw. So we might as well try and hit this guy for one bludgeoning damage. Really, our main goal is to keep Halcyn alive. This one's going to run away. I think they're going to try and call out to guards elsewhere. That might be what these two are both doing together. These guys are trying to break out of their enclosure by breaking down the gates, not in a dissimilar way to we just did. So we got these two guys here with 6 HP apiece. We could shatter. But I think shattering is going to be overkill. So we have both of our spell slots. We do not currently have an active hex for this hero. So let's put a hex on one of them. Now what we must do is kill them before they escape so that we get to reapply our hex. Perfect. Another crit. And I'm actually going to move back towards this door to give ourselves the best chance of trying to hit three when they escape. These guys are attacking their door still. Beastmaster pulls the switch. And they're dashing back towards the fight.
house in healing himself as a bear, as moon druids are one to do. Alright, we've got our imp, and we've got will. Imp, just sting this guy. Five damage is good. On the victor's path. Will already has Hex active, so we can reapply that to three here. And it's going to just be a simple Eldritch Blast. And we miss, which is a shame. Now, it's not going to do us too much good to stand in their way, because goblins can simply disengage as they move. Yeah, figured that wouldn't work. Heroes can't do that because heroes are limited by a hide being a full action, but who knows what different creatures are able to do. Right, the wargs are out. They're dashing, probably towards Halcyn. Oh, great. The help have arrived. These will be the ones from outside. So with these guys having 12 HP each, I think a shatter is far more justified now. Make sure we're not obviously in the area of effect of the spell. And we can bonus action offhand melee strike here. We miss, unfortunately. Wargs continuing to dash into the fight. Right, I really want to break down this chandelier before they have a chance to move. Especially now. These two are just trading blows. There's an action surge. Alright, Imp is down. Hand Wasn't Majigger is down. So, I'm going to hit this to just do some AoE damage to the guys below. Alright, we kind of caught Halcyn in that, but I think it was worth it. And we have our bonus action. We don't have a bonus action attack we can make. Sharp Eye Elf does not need hexing. Uh, I think our hex is actually applied to somebody who escaped, which is a pain. So we'll just back up out of these guys' line of sight. Now, I'm going to use my bonus action to attack off first, then if they die we have a full action to do something else with. We miss, so we'll just do a main hand attack instead. And we gain bless. At the ready. Right, we're alright for HP. Really we need to pull some of this heat away from Halcyn. He currently has 8 HP, which is a bad time. I don't know what happens if he dies. I've come here and he's not been here before. That was interesting. Oh, we're on fire. I missed that. Alright, Will... How far can we get? And can we get a hit on this guy? If we come to here. We might be able to see them. And... Scorching Ray for three hits. Might be our best bet here. 14 damage is really good. 
we are granted an additional bonus action. Don't have anything to use that for, though, apart from casting Hex, which is a shame. And we just cast Scorching Ray, so we can't even cast Hex, because that would be two leveled spells in one turn. Anything we can do with a bonus action. We could consume a potion, don't really need to. Potion of animal speaking, not really what we need right now. Alright, we're just going to pass our turn then. I wonder if this walk's going to burn to death. Doesn't look like it. Oh, of course. Uh, Halcyn's bear form had all of its HP removed, but that's on top of the standard hero's HP. So he still has 94 HP. He's fine. So in that case, over here... Oh, come on. Hit with something. Alright, now the druid. I don't know what that was. Thunder wave? Yeah, very nice. Uh, let's... How much health does this one have? Twelve. Well, I think Grace... I uh, know we're both kind of worse for wear for hit points. But I think now might be the time to get Hex going. Because with a Hex and an Eldritch Blast here... Ah, oh, man. I didn't think 12 HP would be quite so unmanageable. Get ourselves behind some cover. And we were on fire, but it looks like that has now totally resolved. Uh, we can now reapply our Hex, interestingly. So we'll put that there. That's our bonus action, so we only have a main hand action left. One presumes Halcyn's uh, armor class is higher than the natural AC of a bear. We are now basking in Lavatar's love. So our hits have plus two to them, but we are nearly dead, so swings and roundabouts, I suppose. That's what we wanted to see. Where's this guy? Can we see them to reapply Hex from here? Maladictus. Just on the off chance, we have the chance to hit them next turn. Right, Grace has 3 HP, which is bad. However, we are much more likely to hit this guy now that we are basking in love. Plus 2 to our attack rolls and wisdom saves. So, in theory, between our main hand action attack and our bonus action attack, we should be able to hit this guy. Plus, strength, uh, Hex will do even more damage. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, and we will just kind of hide out here, so we're less likely to be hit by a ranged attack from all the stuff going on down there. More thunder waving. Just this guy left, which will, uh, yeah, will uh, hex to them last turn, so this should be even more effective. All right. All right. What now? Okay. I'm going to go into turn based mode right here just to pause the action. Join me next time, after this bloodbath, we will go and speak to the druid Halcyn, see what they have to say about what has just occurred, and see what our next steps are. Almost certainly including a short rest. 
Thank you ever so much for watching. If you're enjoying the series, please do consider subscribing or hitting that like button. If you have any questions or comments, you can put them down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.